Did you begin your sewing journey by learning hand embroidery stitches? Running stitch, stem stitch, lazy daisy stitches, and for some of us, that dreaded blanket stitch. Somehow the needle and thread always seem to get twisted on that stitch. Now we have those stitches duplicated by our sewing machines. Did you know that we can even get the look of embroidery using our sergers? Wow. Along with creating the blanket stitch on the serger, we'll share how to combine rickrack and lace in a fancy band. Our sewing journeys began with a single stitch. Today we have new worlds to explore. Welcome to my sewing room. This is the most precious little knit baby day gown for a little boy. Has some very, very wonderful features. Look at the blanket stitch that comes down the front and look at the release tucks done with a blanket stitch. You are gonna be happy to know that these were done on a serger. A very magic trick I have for you. First of all, you're going to fold your tucks and using a guide foot, you're going to stitch your tucks, straight stitch on a sewing machine, the tucks. Then using some water soluble stabilizer and a special foot on your serger, you're going to surge along to the line of the release tucks. After your tucks are made, you know I have a little secret, this water soluble stabilizer was really not for stabilizing. After the tucks are stitched with the serger, if you tug, when you pull it, it makes a blanket stitch with your serger. I am so pleased to have as my guest to me, my dear, very dear friend, Sue Houseman. Sue is the host of America Sews with Sue Houseman. Sue, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. You know, I love to come and be with you folks and share ideas with your viewers. Well, this adorable baby day gown with these serger, how do you do that? Just well, go ahead. I have to share that the first thing you would do would be to stitch these tucks. In other words, cut it out according to the pattern and stitch the little tucks. And we would do that on our okay. sewing machine. That's what I I wanted to point out that you're not going to make the whole baby, you can't make the buttonholes on a serger. So you're going to use your sewing machine and your serger in tandem and as a team and sew it maybe with a guide foot. Uh, many machines have a guide foot that will guide those little straight stitches, shorter stitch length than usual on this lighter fabric, about a 2.0 stitch length, and then adjust your needle position so you have the right size tucks. Okay. But then once you have those stitched, you're going to do this little trick but you need to have some water soluble style stabilizer. And I, you know, a lot of times people say, how would you ever get little strips of water soluble stabilizer? Well, the same way we get little strips of anything else. We use our cutting <laughs> board and we use our stabilizer and we use our ruler and we just cut five eighths inch strips of water soluble stabilizer because those become the handle for pulling that around. Now, the next thing I'm gonna suggest is that you take your scraps and you practice with your tension and with your settings on your serger because you never know about your serger, so to speak. Because what we wanna do is we want to go over to the boards here and know that we're going to use a heavier thread in most cases with a two thread flat lock. We're going to use a 30 weight cotton. Um, I'm using it on both the lower looper and the left needle. That's the only thing you use when you do a two thread flat lock is just two places, left needle, lower looper. And and you're going to put the left needle tension on about zero. Look in your book to be sure. And then your lower looper tension, it'll say maybe five or so, but you may even want to crank it up a little more. So practice on those scraps until you get a nice balanced two thread stitch because that balanced two thread stitch is what's going to pull out to become the blanket stitch. You can use decorative threads if you like. Just experiment. The tensions will be a little different according to your thread. And if you're using the heavier thread, use a top stitch needle if you're using that 30 weight cotton. So once you've sewn those tucks, you're ready to lay a piece, a strip of this water soluble on top, and then this is what you have ready to sew. And as you can see, we have a couple of them sewn, and they have a nice balanced two thread flat lock, Martha. So that makes it pretty easy to go. And we're ready to stitch this one. Now, if you think you're gonna have trouble getting started, you might wanna just put a piece of tape on that. So I'm gonna pick that up and take it over to the serger now. 
and I have the serger all set for two thread flat lock. My stitch length is about 3.5 to 4. We're using a guide foot and this is one time then when we want to raise the presser foot to get started. And it's good to start at the bottom of the tuck because that allows you to start right on the fabric and I've adjusted the guide on the foot. We'll lower that presser foot ready to go and now we'll just stitch. Again only one needle here and only one looper, the lower looper. The upper looper is filled when you're doing two thread flat lock. And so now you see that looks like just a nice two thread flat lock, doesn't it? Well, yes it does. Uh huh. And we might use that decoratively <laughs> for something and pull the fabric open. But in this case, we are using this little piece of stabilizer. We'll take that piece of tape off and we're going to use it to pull that stitch to the outside or toward the fold and so we're just using it as a handle and can you see how in pulling that out of course that 30 weight a little heavier thread gives you that beautiful flat lock blanket serger stitch along each of the tucks and then I'm sure you can see that we did do it also around the sleeve which is a really nice little trim and down the front placket of the little day gown as well. Do you know, I think that's one of the <laughs> truly new things. Since I have never seen that before, I am just delighted to have learned that in Martha's Sewing Room today. Well, isn't it easy? And now the last thing I wanted to share was the fact that Obviously, when we do a little day gown, we want to do a dainty little buttonhole. And a lot of people don't think about the fact that most machines have a number of different buttonhole styles. Some of them have little heirloom type buttonholes that look like little blanket stitches, but they're wide in most cases. Most cases, the buttonholes are set quite wide, sometimes as wide as seven millimeters. We don't want a great big fat thick buttonhole on our <laughs> cute little baby day gown. So to do a buttonhole, again, let's stabilize it with some water soluble underneath, but let's set that buttonhole for a narrower width. And again, practice on scraps. That's my motto, practice on scraps. Now here we wouldn't use a heavier decorative thread. We'd use the fine construction thread that we're putting the garment together with. Maybe a 60 over 2 cotton or an extra fine cotton thread because that would give us a very dainty little heirloom buttonhole at a narrower width, usually like about a four width instead of the seven that it comes up at on your machine. And of course a little tiny length. But again, the key to so much of this is practice on scraps before you jump right onto your garment that you've cut out. And the great thing with sewing is that when we cut out, we have scraps to practice on. Oh, Sue, that is just, those are such wonderful ideas. And now Sue has some sewing inspirations to share with you. So tell us about these wonderful pillows. Well, I'm really excited to share with everyone that this is done with a embroidery design and a couching type foot. So as the embroidery stitches, the thread or the yarn is running through the foot and being caught by the needle that is set by the embroidery. So that's an embroidery. Oh, how yeah. exciting. Yes, and, and be sure to take a look too at the candle wicking because a lot of people don't understand that you can do candle wicking on your sewing machine. You can program multiple zigzags on top of each other and then a long basting stitch and then come back and snip that basting stitch. Now these are some built-in stitches on some machines, but many you'll be programming those. So that's another cool thing, but yes, turn it over Martha, because Have here's to. the same <laughs> foot that actually couches down yarn, but done free motion. So Beautiful. you have your choice of doing Beautiful. it free motion or with embroidery. This is a fun one. I, pretty, you know, using, pretty pillow. <laughs> using the serger, I had to share oh. that this is the serger ruffle pillow and take a look at that rolled edge. We're gonna be talking about that next. And so I wanted everybody to see how cool a rolled edge could be <laughs> on a pillow. But we have some more cool projects over here, Martha. Oh, I know. Um, I know. What do you think about the ruffle duffle? I thought it was so much fun. <laughs> the ruffle duffle. The ruffle duffle. And of course, again, that rolled edge on all of those ruffles, which goes so fast. And then the ruffling attachment to put the ruffles onto the, ba the piece of flat fabric and adding a strip of the endless type embroidery and 
just setting the end in. So this is really quite an easy project to do. And so much yep. fun. <laughs> this is a kind of a surprise project. This sits on the back of a piece in your bathroom and it holds two rolls of you know what and a square box of tissues in the middle so that when well, someone that needs nice. an extra roll they can simply pick it up. And it's so pretty. And it's so pretty <laughs> and it uses cute piping as well. Okay. This is a christening dress, an example of what you can do if you have a more basic sewing machine. This is done all with decorative stitches, twin needle tucks, entredeau insertion, and was done on an entry level machine, not an embroidery machine. So I, I like people to know they don't have to have an embroidery machine to do something fabulous. This too, the thread and the beautiful decorative stitches make it what it is, no embroidery. So people just an who- entry level machine with just a few decorative stitches. Mm -hmm, beautiful. Absolutely makes, beautiful. Makes a real wow piece if you use the fancy threads and things. And then this is the uh, technique where you stitch multiple zigzag embroidery. It's a digitized design and has to be, and because it actually has to have stitching around the edges to hold those threads in place, because after that zigzag stitched, we cut it with a seam ripper. I'm going to show everybody that next. Okay. That's so, so quick, so easy project for you. Tell us about this wonderful velvet embroidery you're going to do. <laughs> well, actually, my project is a baby receiving blanket, but I think it's important to know that embroideries today come in all sizes. And I had a little velvet baby one, and I thought, I need to show everybody how the big velvets are nice, too. And what this means is that some of these designs that build up in big humps, well, this was an example that's already been cut. After you stitch it out, you take a seam ripper and you cut right down the middle. Now, they don't bloom right away. I'll show you that, Martha, okay. on this one that we have here that's in the hoop. Because they don't bloom up right away, what you need to do usually is to take and let them sit about four hours. Or if you're really in a hurry and you have to give this gift right away or you want to wear this jacket right away, if you give it a blast of steam with a steam iron, don't put the steam iron down on it. Just give it a good blast of steam. And that steam will have it just uh, fluff up. See, here it is all fluffed up. And so wouldn't some little baby love to touch that? Absolutely. Yes. So the project today, you can unwrap the present, okay. is actually the receiving blanket baby wrap with matching tie. Okay, so you can just slide that one off. Okay. So we have the little receiving blanket. You know, we spend so much today to wrap a package. Do you agree with that? Oh, and so why not give something nice? Like a bridal shower, I wrap in towels, the towels that the bride has selected. So, okay, here's her present. We'll set that aside. And now what does she have? She has a great little receiving blanket, okay, with a little furry butterfly <laughs> that she can enjoy. Now, I love this little tale to say that I really suggest not using that liquid stuff that keeps it from coming out on baby things because it makes them stiff and so in this case we're using a double-eyed needle to just pull that in but now we're ready to make this now you'll notice over here I have several different ways to finish it and these are mostly rolled edge and before you start practice on scraps and of course people don't like going around corners with their sergers. So instead of going around corners, why not take a plate and mark those corners into curves? Then you can just surge right around the curve, Martha. Wonderful. You don't have to worry about surging around the corners. Now, flannels come in all different types and weights and qualities. This is a beautiful one, very lightweight for baby. You never have too many receiving blankets, that's for sure, especially with that newborn. And so it's pretty on both sides, but many flannels aren't pretty. And you need to wash those flannels too so that they will shrink evenly and then we're not pretty on the other side you can actually stitch them double but go to your serger and set it for rolled edge and what you're going to do then you don't even need to do anything just set that length maybe a little bit longer and here we have a little heavier one that isn't rolling so we might want to do this flat but the other thing you can do to make that matching um, that matching ribbon that I talked about is that after you finish the receiving blanket, just take a spool and run yourself a lot of extra rolled edge and wind it on a spool as you're doing it. I like to have this around for all kinds of things, belt loops and little button loops and things. So this way, every time you're set for rolled edge, you have extra. 
But if you want to do a rolled edge on a very lightweight, increase that needle, uh, that lower looper tension and decrease that upper looper tension. The thread makes a big difference. Try pretty threads too. Oh, Sue, thank <laughs> you so much. And that is a wonderful idea to wrap a shower yeah. present in a baby blanket. Make receiving blankets. You get much better quality. Yes, thank you so much. And now we have some machine embroidery ideas to share with you. I'm so pleased to have as my guest, Denise Applegate Schober. Denise is with Cactus Punch. Denise, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Martha. Is this uh, candle wicking on it a is. sweater? I cannot imagine. With the embroidery machine. Oh, I think that would be about the only way you could do candle wicking on a sweater. This is beautiful. Is this just one hooping, Denise? It is one hooping, and then the little single uh, dragonfly was done in the software, just edited out. All right. Show us how that works. I will. What I did was I purchased a pre-made sweatshirt and an embroidery collection that has candle wicking designs in it. And we have a foot here, and I'm going to explain the foot is actually for sewing on the sewing machine and it's tooled out in the bottom with this groove you can see here that there's a groove that'll accommodate larger stitches and candle wicking used to be done by hand so you might need this fifica and the fifica is a measuring tool that actually measures out the distance between stitches so depending on how far your stitches are apart you might use that but Today, if you do that by hand. If you did it by well, hand. That's a neat little tool. But today we can do it with the embroidery machine or we can do it with our sewing machine with maybe pre-programmed in stitches or you could program in your stitches. So let me show you how on the sewing machine, Martha. I've selected a pre-programmed stitch. I have the candle wick wicking foot on the machine and I'm going to begin sewing with that stitch and it will automatically make the little knot looking piece like a French knot used to have. So we'll sew a few and then I'll let you look at it. The texture is a little bit raised. And here are all the little candle wicking stitches. Well, I think that's, and they really are a little bit raised and feel somewhat like candle wicking, don't they? So you can do candle wicking by hand. And what is the name of that little tool? A fificus. A fificus. I love it. Or you could do it by embroidery machine or actually do it by sewing machine. Yes. Denise. And on a sweater or on a regular fabric that's, you know, a medium weight cotton. Thank you so much for your wonderful ideas on machine embroidery. Thank you, Denise. And now I have a quilting segment for you. This kind of sampler quilt can really be put away for your grandmother's hope chest or could be enjoyed to make it in a larger size for your own bed. But to tell you the truth, this quilt to me spells child or grandchild. It is really a sampler of beginning French sewing techniques. Up here we have a beautiful lace-shaped heart with tucks in the middle. So there are several techniques of French sewing right there. Then there's some straight techniques here, very easy to do with entredot to lace and using beading in the Swiss insertion. The next square over has Madeira applique, the easy kind with a wash away basting thread, one of my very favorite things to do. And then we have another heart with another applique heart in the middle. One of our beloved techniques in heirloom sewing is shark's teeth. These are easy to do, just a little time consuming. Now to take our sampler on over a little bit, we have a lace shaped diamond with pin tucks, not folded tucks, but pin tucks in the middle. Wonderful scallops, scalloped curved pin tucks, very easy to do. Scalloped lace, you can use it on the quilt square on the bottom of dresses, a beautiful technique. And the middle is so interesting, it just has grids of straight stitching. The beautiful oval, or football as Joanna used to call it, the oval shape which has straight laces in the middle, and again some insertion. Then another heart, this time with gridded pin, double needle pin tucks. Very easy to do with your double needles. I use a 1.6 or a 2.0 on heirloom. Now let's come to this square. Uh, very interesting techniques. We have used insertion and rickrack, the cotton rickrack, insertion and rickrack and insertion. Absolutely easy to do. All right, this uh, square has the puffing with entredot on either side. And once again, we come back 
to the wonderful lace-shaped heart, one of my all-time favorites. Now, if you'll just come over here with me, I'm going to share with you that technique of applying rickrack, that tiny little rickrack to lace. It's very easy to do, and there's just a little tiny trick. One of the tricks is that this uh, water-soluble glue gun, where you just put a little bit of glue down. And let me tell you what else I'm going. Another trick is I'm going to do this on water-soluble stabilizer. The first thing I'm going to do is to draw a line so my lace will be straight because lace goes in the middle. So I'm going to draw a line, and then put just a little dot, just a little bit. Now this is the water-soluble stabilizer I'm working on. Also, just a little dot of the washable glue down and very carefully kind of glue my lace down. All right, now this um, rickrack is tiny, tiny. It's the cotton rickrack and it's so little. So I'm not gonna work on that unless I do a little pre-treatment and you've probably guessed what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a little dot of glue along just barely enough to hold it on one side, just a little tiny dot of the washable glue kind of glue the rickrack down. And actually, I've already done this over here. Now I'm ready to zigzag it. I'm using a two width and a, I mean a two width and a two length. What I want you to do, now you're gonna be sewing, you're gonna be zigzagging right on that stabilizer. And I'm gonna go really slowly just so I can try to get those, at least get the point of the rickrack every time I zigzag. Maybe I can go a little faster even. I do believe I have it set exactly. You don't want it too wide. Just barely wide enough to catch the edging of the lace, the heading of the lace rather, which is those strings kind of that run up and down the French lace. And just the point, now you're gonna say, when I'm off the one of those zig, one of those zig and zags you're doing, is going to go on that water soluble stabilizer. Don't worry, that's exactly what it's supposed to do. And I do love the water soluble stabilizer when I work with something where I don't need to pull, you know, pull the tearaway stabilizer away. One of the joys of heirloom sewing today that we didn't have 25 years ago when I started was all these wonderful stabilizers and the, um, the things that make it so much easier today. We used to have to sew on paper for stabilizer because that was really all we had, tissue paper. I can remember pressing tissue paper from presents I had, but today it's wonderful. We have the right stabilizers for everything. Now, after you sew the whole piece, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and make this whole lace and zigzagged rickrack piece. I put the whole piece down on my fabric, on my quilt square, and I will pin one side, pin the other side, and I will attach it to the quilt square. And that is how easy it is to do this wonderful, uh, attaching lace to lace by using a tiny little cotton rickrack in the middle. Now I'd like to share a piece from my vintage collection with you. This beautiful petticoat is from Sue Houseman's private collection. You know, it's, it's very unusual for us, of our circa 1900 or even earlier, this could be 1850s um, on, petticoat to have any trim. And this creative mother or grandmother has put a beautiful piece of Swiss edging, a wide piece at the neckline, which I think is very pretty. And it is very unusual. So this, I believe, was a very creative person. She's also put the little tucks that go all the way down to the waist. Now these little petticoats traditionally wrapped through, and I'll show you the little buttonholes in just a minute that they wrap through and tied in the front. This is a very elaborate petticoat. Since it has tucks, a number of folded tucks, a beautiful Swiss insertion, some more folded tucks, and that same gorgeous wide piece of Swiss edging that this creative seamstress uh, put at the top also. As a matter of fact, she used this same piece right here. I bet she just had a little extra and she cut it off. Let me show you real quickly the buttonholes in the back. So this these little petticoats wrapped. Here's a buttonhole and it just wraps through and that's how those little petticoats were put on the baby. I have a wonderful letter here from Nina Patton, Lake Country Quilters, telling us about a special lady named Jeanette. Jeanette has gotten us involved in making quilts for our servicemen to send to Walter Reed Hospital. She also is teaching six of us to smock dresses for premature babies to, lo to donate to our local hospital. The nurses are sending back messages that these dresses are very much appreciated by the mothers. We are members of the Lake Country Quilters in Clarksville, Virginia. We meet the first Thursday of the month to quilt 
and the third Thursday to Smock. You ladies are so busy. And Nina, thank you and your ladies for all the work you're doing. Thank you for joining me in my sewing room today. I'd like to invite you to come back next time.